today's note to over target one are is actually a review from something that you guys did in geometry. Um, so we're going to talk about simplifying square roots. This is going to be a really important part of our whole unit. Um, so we're just going to start off with this as target one. So there's lots of ways to do this. So if you in geometry did this a different way and you felt more successful, by all means go ahead and um, use those ways. But I'm going to give you one method that always works that um, tends to be um, something that students choose. So what we're going to do is, first of all, the square root of 8, if you just throw that into your calculator, it's not a whole number because 8 isn't a perfect square. So the square root of 8 actually comes out to be about 2 point, um, if I round 2.8 to uh, 8. So I'm going to make a note of that. But we don't want to use that because, like I said, I did just round that. Um, and so when it comes to finding an exact answer, that doesn't represent an exact number. Um, so we're going to simplify this radical instead. So I'm going to start by coming up with two numbers that multiply to give you 8. I'm going to choose 4 and 2. You can choose any two numbers other than uh, 1 and that particular number. Whenever you break down the numbers, look for anything that's prime. So for example, 2, I can't break down that, I can't break 2 down any further because it could only be 1 and 2 as the factors. So I stop there. But for 4, I can break that down into 2 and 2. And then um, I have my complete, what we call, factor tree. So what this means is that the square root of 8, what we started with, is also equal to the square root of 2 times 2 times 2. It's all those numbers that I boxed in. So then to simplify, what I'm going to do is look for a pair of numbers. So I have a pair of 2s. And that's going to go on the outside of the radical. So that pair of twos is going to go on the outside. And then anything that's left under the radical, for example, this two, stays under. So notice when you take out a pair, you only have one value representing it. So I had a pair of twos, but I just put one two out in front. So this will be my final answer. Um, and then what you can do is put that in your calculator. And you can check your work because it should give you that same decimal because we're just simplifying, we're not changing the value. So it's going to be the same process over and over again. So looking at 50, numbers that multiply to 50, I'm going to choose 5 and 10. You can choose 2 and 25. Lots of options there. 5 is a prime number. I can't break that down any further. But 10, I can break down into 5 and 2. Again, can't break those down. They're both prime. So then I have the square root of 50 which is the same as the square root of 5 times 5 times 2, those numbers that I put in the boxes. I'm going to look for a pair of numbers, so I have a pair of 5. So 5 goes on the outside, and the 2, since it doesn't have a pair, stays under. And then you can type in your calculator the square root of 50, and it should give you the same number as the square root of 5, or sorry, 5 square root 2. All right, so C is just a little different because you have a number out in front. So that negative 2 out in front, I will take care of in a second. But for right now, I'm going to break down uh, 200. So I'm going to break it down into 102. That's just the first set of factors I thought of. And then I'm going to do 50 and 2. And then I'm going to do 25 and 2. And then 25 would be 5 and 5. Okay, so when I rewrite this, I'm going to remember that there's a negative 2 already out in front. And then I have 5 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. So I have two pairs in this particular case. So I have a 5 and a 2. So the 5 and the 2 go out in front. But remember, there was already that negative 2 out in front. And then I have the lone 2 that's left under the radical. So if I multiply 5 times 2 times negative 2 out in front, that gives me negative 20 square root 2. And as always, you can check your answers by plugging in your original problem and your um, final answer, and they should give you the same decimal. All right, so here on 4, we have our on uh, D, we have 4 square root 235. So 235, I'm going to break down into um, 47 and 5. And so 
I know 5 is prime, and then 47, I can't think of any numbers that multiply to give you that. So those are our um, values. So then that would give us 4 square root 47 times 5. And there are no pairs here, so if you multiply 47 and 5 together, we get 235. So notice the final answer is actually the same as our original problem. It just means it couldn't be simplified. So like if we had a fraction 1 over 2, we can't simplify that any further. Okay, so now we're going to get into another set of problems. And notice that on E through H, they all have a negative under the square root. And so if you try to type these into your calculator, it's actually going to give you an error message because as of right now, um, we haven't been taught how to deal with a negative under the square root. Uh, we would just say no solution. So what happens is if there's a negative under the square root, there's a whole different set of numbers we deal with, and they're called imaginary numbers. So we're now entering the imaginary number land. So i is the imaginary unit, and is equal to the value of the square root of negative 1. And so anytime you have a negative under your square root, you're going to first break this down into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of the positive value. So negative 1 times 4 is still negative 4. And then we're going to use that definition I just gave you. So i is the imaginary unit, and it's equal to the value of negative 1. So that means i is the same as the square root of negative 1, and we know that the square root of 4 is 2. So what the final answer here would be is 2i. So we're going to have an i in the answer anytime you have a negative under the square root. So on f, we have square root of negative 1 times square root of 80, so breaking up that negative and the 80. So this is i square root 80. But unlike e, 80 isn't a perfect square, so I'm going to go back up to what I was doing the top of our notes and break this down into its factors. So I'm going to use 8 and 10. That would be 4 and 2. 4 can break down further. And 5, or uh, 10 breaks down into 2 and 5. So when I rewrite what I have, I have an i on the outside, and then I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Same rules apply as above. Look for any pairs that you have. Put those out in front. So I have two pairs of 2. I have an i out in front as well. And I have a 5 under the square root. If I do 2 times 2 times i, that gives me 4i square root 5. So on g, First, going to have that 3 out in front, then I'm going to break up the negative 300 into negative 1 and positive 300. So this is really 3i square root 300. And then we're going to try to um, simplify 300. So I'm going to choose 3 and 100. 3 is prime. Let's do 50 and 2. 25 and 2 and 5 and 5. And then if I rewrite, I have a 3i out in front, and then I have um, 5 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 3. Looking for pairs. So I have 5 times 2 and then I have times 3i square root 3. Then I'm going to multiply 5 times 2 times 3i, and that would give me 30i square root 3. So the process is the same, it's just when you have a negative under your square root, that means you have an i in your answer. Alright, same thing over here, just new numbers. Breaking it up, including the i. And then let's break this down. So that would be 4, that would be 112. So then this would be 2 and 2. 
and then for 112, that's 4 and 28. And remember, you can choose different numbers, and you should result in the same answer. This one's got a lot. Okay, so when I rewrite, I have the negative 2i out in front, and then I have 2, oops, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. Do I have them all? I think I have them all. Times 7. So looking for pairs, so a pair of 2s, pair of 2s, pair of 2s. So out in front, I have 3 2s. And then I still have that negative 2i with the 7 under. So that would be 2 times 2 times negative 2 would be negative 16i square root 7. So again, these this is all um, stuff that we'll be doing all unit long. So it's really important that we master it here at the beginning of the unit um, for target 1.